In this problem, the function that we're given is actually a polynomial, though it may not look quite like a typical polynomial would. Uh, the way that it's written, it has the factor 3 minus x that's squared, and then to it we're adding 5. So the fact that we have this 3 minus x squared is what's going to make this uh, derivative require a bit of algebra first, since all we have at this point would be sum and difference rule, uh, product quotient rule, and then a uh, ways to be able to handle um, constant multiples out front and powers of x. And so what we've got to do here, since we don't have a rule that allows us to take the derivative of something ugly raised to a power, we've got to rewrite that first um, term. And so what we get here is uh, 3 minus x times itself, um, and then we add 5 to it. So now, uh, this still doesn't quite look like a polynomial, but if I were to go ahead and multiply those factors out there I would and gather our like terms, we would have something that does look like a typical polynomial. So multiplying this out, we got 3 times 3 is 9, and then we've got 3 times negative x, which is negative 3x, and we've got two copies of that. Um, so we've got a total of negative 6x, and then we have negative x times negative x, which would be x squared. And then we can't forget about this plus 5 sitting there. And so when we uh, go back and we gather our like terms, we've got x squared minus 6x. And we've got 9 plus 5 that we're combining to give us 14. So that is a polynomial. Uh, it looks like a polynomial like we're typical like we typically see. And so when we're taking the derivative of the polynomial, we take it just term by term, um, leaving constant multiples out front and utilizing power rules for the powers of x. So since I'm finally ready to take the derivative, now I utilize my derivative notation, f prime of x. Um, before that, everything that I did was simply algebraic and it was just rewriting the original function. So here with the derivative, we have f prime of x, and we're ready to take it term by term. So we need the derivative of x squared. That uses the power rule, so we bring the 2 down, we drop the power by 1, um, and so that would be the 2 minus 1 there for our new power. Uh, the next term is negative 6x, so we've got the constant multiple negative 6 sitting out front, and then the derivative of x. Well, the derivative of x is simply 1. Uh, we could utilize the power rule to get there because we'd have the power 1 that we bring down front. Then it would be x to the 0, but that is understood to be 1 also. Uh, you could also think about this term as being the line negative 6x. Well, the negative 6x line would have slope negative 6, and therefore um, the negative 6 makes sense there too. So then our last term there is um, plus 14. 14 is a constant, and the derivative of a constant is 0 because a constant line is just a horizontal line. So I'll go ahead and put the plus 0 there. So then all in all, we've got a 2x minus 6 being our derivative of the polynomial. Now we could uh, do this problem a slightly different way. Um, we can't start from the very beginning yet. We'll get there. Um, but we could start here where we don't actually multiply out um, the, the factor that we write as a product, um, but we could utilize the product rule there. And so here's our alternative solution. Okay. So our alternative solution is gonna start here at this uh, point I'm indicating. So there's our f of x. So now we need the derivative, um, f prime of x, and we're going to get that utilizing the uh, product rule for those two uh, terms that are multiplied together. And then we just cannot forget to also handle that plus 5. So the product rule says we take the derivative of the first term. So we're taking the derivative of the first copy there of uh, 3 minus x, and then to it, we multiply it by that second copy of 3 minus x. And then to finish off the product rule, we would have the first copy of 3 minus x times the derivative of the second copy of 3 minus x. Okay. Notice that I added those together. That's part of the product rule. But I also cannot forget about that plus 5. So to complete our derivative, we've got to add to it the derivative of that 5. All right, so let's let's do this. The derivative of 3 minus x. Well, we can think about this a couple of different ways. We can do it term by term because that's a polynomial. The derivative of 3 is the derivative of the constant, so that would be 0. 
Uh, and then we could look at this as uh, the derivative of negative x. Um, so we've got the subtraction rule that has the negative sign there, and we know that the derivative of x is 1. Uh, we can get that utilizing the power rule, um, or thinking about this as you know the derivative of the line y equals x would just be the slope of that line, which is 1. And in fact, you can um, think about this whole factor, the derivative of that entire factor in terms of the slope of a line, because 3 minus x itself is a line that has slope negative 1, and so the derivative of that is negative 1. So we've got negative 1 times the 3 minus x, and then uh, to it we've got to add uh, 3 minus x times the derivative of 3 minus x again, which is, like we've talked about, just negative 1. And then we add the derivative of the constant 5, which is just adding 0, um, as we've seen throughout. So now what we're looking at here is we've got negative parentheses 3 minus x. And then we have a plus, um, and then there's a negative 1 factor there. So it's really minus um, 3 minus x. And then the plus is 0 that we don't have to write. So distributing the negative sign, we have negative 3 plus x. And then another distributing of negative sign is a negative 3 plus x. So all in all, when we gather our like terms, we have 2x minus 6, which is what we got when we multiplied everything out completely first and then took the derivative of the polynomial term by term, avoiding the product rule. So, um, I mean, I'm not sure which one's the better approach here. I think both of them could be viable. Uh, I typically take the first approach just because it's nice to kind of order everything um, and then not have to do the product rule. But you don't want to have to go well out of your way to avoid the product rule. However, just multiplying these two things out didn't take much time. And so I probably would go with the first um, approach, even though the second approach is equally good.